I'd like to say good morning to everyone. We thank God for another day. We thank Him for allowing us to come out this morning to worship Him in spirit and truth. We know this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's always a blessing when we can come together, even virtually. We thank God for making a way. Amen. Amen. And, and this morning, I I want to uh, uh, ask your prayers for uh, the Holman family as they funeralized their mother this morning, Al and Ruby and the family, and also uh, uh, Sister Jackie Bannister and family who funeralized her mother on Friday. So keep them lifted up in prayer. And now all of our members, those that are experiencing illnesses and whatever it is, we, we just want to keep them lifted up in prayer. And also, a uh, prayer request would ask for Joanna Mack and Jessica Murphy and Deontay Moore. So uh, let's keep all lifted up in prayer because all of us stand in need of prayer. And we, we realize we serve a God who's a prayer answering God who will make a way. Regardless of whatever it is that's going on in our lives, we can call on him and he will come and see about us. So let's worship the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen.
thank you for this opportunity to come into your house and worship today, dear God. We come with thanksgiving in our heart, dear God, because we know it didn't have to be so, but we thank you for your grace this morning, dear God. So we come praying to a holy God, a righteous God, a one that speak and things change, dear God. So we come asking you to speak to us today, dear God, because we need change, dear God. We come right now asking for forgiveness, dear God. Uh, for begin for being forgetful hearers and not faithful doers of the word, dear God. So we need your help right now, dear God, so that we can be a better people for you. So we come praying right now, whatever challenge we might be facing, dear God, that we focus on you, King Jesus. Because we know you're the only one that can see us through, dear God. So no matter what it might be, that we still look to you, dear God. We look to you over people, places, and things, dear God. Because we know you are the greatest, dear God. You are the great I am. So dear God, we come and ask him right now for your people, dear God, that we be a people of prayer, dear God. Your words that we should pray without ceasing, dear God. So give us a new desire, dear God, to pray no matter what it looks like, dear God. Pray no matter what it feels like, dear God. Pray always, dear God, because you said be anxious for nothing. But with, uh, with all things we pray and supplication, with thanksgiving, make our request known, dear God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will keep us in Christ Jesus, dear God. So we come right now, dear God, casting our cares on you, dear God, because we need your help in these challenging times, dear God. But dear God, I pray also, dear God, that we build people that stand firm on your word, dear God. That we stand firm against the wiles of the devil, dear God. But the only way we can do that, dear God, we need to put on the full armor of God, dear God. We can't miss one piece and get an enemy an opportunity to attack us, dear God. So I pray that your people suit up today, dear God, and be ready for a spiritual battle, dear God, because we know that it's not a, a battle of flesh and blood, dear God. And then, dear God, help us to press on, dear God, as we stand to help us to move on, dear God. Forgetting those things behind us, but pressing toward the mark of those calling them God in Christ Jesus, dear God. And then, dear God, help us not to get weary and well doing, dear God, because we know there's a great reward for that faithfulness, dear God. So we love you today, dear God, and we're praying as a people on one accord and one mind, dear God, that you'll move on just those few things for us, dear God. But I know that you'll do great and mightier things than I can even ask or imagine, dear God. So I love you today, dear God, and we come praying for those that seek, dear God. But this I do know that you're the almighty healer, dear God. So we ask just one request, dear God, that you heal according to your will, dear God. Because no matter what you do, I know that your grace is sufficient, dear God. And we come right now asking for your comfort on those that are going through bereavement, dear God. But I know that you already fixed that, dear God. Because we know death is not final because of the work of Jesus Christ, dear God. But comfort them, dear God, and give them that peace, dear God. So we love you today, dear God. And you heard the names that were called out that need prayer, dear God. And you understand what's going on in this world, dear God. People are leaving here daily, dear God. But I pray that they're not leaving without knowing you, dear God. Because I know they won't be lost, dear God. We know where they are, dear God. And they can't come back to us, but God, I'm so glad. I can go to them, Lord. So we love you today, dear God. And I pray that you have your way in the midst of this service. Bless Pastor Lord, dear God, dear God. You don't have to give him preaching power, dear God. But just help him trust you because you already gave him the power. We love you today. It's the mighty name of Jesus we pray.
that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship. For we are his workmanship, Amen. created in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. unto good works. Yep. Created in Christ Jesus unto good yep. works, which God had done, had before ordained mm -hmm. that we should walk in them. Yep. May God bless the reading of his word for the good and application of our souls. Amen. Amen. Amen.
ask our Lord to say the Holy Spirit is our keeper. To each one of you that are present here in this sanctuary, those who are viewing virtually this morning, we thank God for each one of you. And as I said, it's truly a blessing that we can come and worship God in this fashion. Church building may not be full, but God still has his ways of reaching people because he loves us and he cares for us. So I thank God for this moment, this time, because God has been good to all of us. I don't care what, what, what what's happening in your life. God has still been good to you. Amen. Whatever. He, he, he woke you up this morning. Even though that son that, that opened, their, opened their eyes this morning and they couldn't get up, God was still good. Opening, opened their eyes this morning and couldn't get up. But God is still good. Somebody laid down last night and didn't wake up this morning. But God is still good. He's still good. Regardless, he's good. I would like to invite your attention to the book, the Old Testament book of Joshua again. And we want to go to that very last chapter, verse 24. Very well known scripture. Chapter Joshua chapter 24. We want to begin reading at verse 14. And, 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 and add 15 with it. Verses 14 and 15. I'm reading from the King James Version. Amen. It says, verse 14 reads as thus. Now therefore fear the Lord. And serve him in sincerity and in truth. Put away the gods which, which your father served on the other side of the flood. And then in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood are the gods of the Amorites in whose land he dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be saved. I'm going to talk from this subject. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you, Lord, for this another opportunity to come before your people. Lord, uh, praying for your guidance, the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We ask right now that you would speak and that we will open our hearts this morning. Father, we pray that you receive all the glory today. Every prayer that was prayed. Every song song. We do it to your glory. And your preach word, we, we do it to your glory this morning. But we have not the power, the strength to do it. All that you give us, Heavenly Father, we thank you. Because we know in order to do anything for you, Lord, you have to supply whatever it is that we need. So we thank you right now. So speak to us. Open our hearts may receive it, mm -hmm. apply it to our lives. It's in Jesus' name. Pray. Amen. 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 This morning in this 24th chapter, we find that Israel had conquered all the their enemies in the, the land of Canaan, mm -hmm. the land that God had promised them. 
And when I think about this, and you know how we say we, we give credit where credit is due. Mm -hmm. And uh, Joshua was speaking to the children of Israel, mm -hmm. reminding them of their history, where it all started, where God had brought a man by the name of Abram at that time. And even up until this point to where they are now. God, God is a faithful God. Uh, we, we see he's faithful to Abraham because Abraham stepped out on faith mm -hmm. to believe God because in Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 through 3 we find that God is, he tells Abraham now the Lord has said unto Abraham get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land I will show thee and I will make of thee a great nation, and will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee, and these shall all families of the earth be blessed. In, in, in this chapter 1, I mean chapter 24, verse 1, Joshua now uh, uh, has called all the people together, it says, and Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel, for the elders of Israel, and for their heads, and for their judges, and for their officers, and they presented themselves before God. Uh, here, Joshua is. It, 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 this is uh, Joshua speaking the words of God, reminding them of their history. Mm -hmm. and in verse two. Joshua said unto all the people, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood. In old, in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nahor, and they served other gods. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and, and gave him Isaac and I gave unto Isaac, Jacob, and Esau, and I gave unto Esau, Mount Seir, Seir, to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. And God, Jacob, uh, uh, Joshua was just reminding them of what God had done. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, do, do you remember what God has brought you from? Mm -hmm. God has been faithful to those before us. He's faithful to us right now. Right. Even if this day and time, of all the calamities we had to we had to endure, we, we think about this this virus now that got it that started in 2020 of March, but yet God is continuing to keep us. It was the Lord. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. It's the Lord that's keeping us through all this racism and hatred, police brutality. It is the Lord. That continues to That's keep right, us. Right. When you think about where you used to be right. and where God has brought you now, it, 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 it was nobody but the Lord. We were not smart enough. We were not wise enough. We, 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 we were ignorant to a lot of things. But yet, it's the Lord that continues to bring us regardless of what we face, of what we've been through. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. Oh, he was saying here that God was faithful to your forefathers. Your forefathers. Uh -huh. Amen. That he promised Abraham a land. He promised him riches and all this. And, and God did just that. Right. It said that he multiplied them. Yeah. God, when God, when God says it, yeah. it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't care how it looks. I don't care who is against you. If he said it, it will happen. You can count on it. God, because God is faithful. Ain't it, ain't, ain't it some, even when we're not faithful, he's still faithful. Yeah, and he, he gave to Abraham. He gave to Isaac. He gave to Jacob. Just like he said he would. And all of them viewed that land. Uh -huh. Abraham went into Canaan. Uh -huh. 
It says that Jacob went down into Egypt. And we know the story. Joseph, one of Jacob's sons, that's how they wound up in Egypt because there was a famine. It, it was the Lord. Uh, it, it, it somehow God goes out before you and already makes a way for you. Even when you can't see the way, God has already made the way. It's just up to us to follow him, to be obedient to him, to, to obey him. And God will lead us in the path that we need to go. Yeah, it was just his faithfulness. And, and all of us can, can attest that God is faithful. We were dealing with whatever it is that we were dealing with. Uh, God was right there with us. He tells us in his word that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And I don't believe nobody here present today, y'all, uh, or those who may be viewing, can say God hadn't been faithful to them. God has been faithful to all of us. We chose to receive his son Jesus. He was faithful. He was faithful. He didn't turn his back on us like we turn our backs on God. But yet he's still faithful when we're in our messed up ways. He's still faithful. He doesn't turn away from us because he loves each and every one of us. Even those that are unsaved, he loved them as well. And how should we look at those that, 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 that are unsaved? We, we ought to look at them with love. We ought to look at them through the eyes of Jesus. Because I'm reminded Jesus was looking at me when I was in all my messed up ways. Come on. It was, it is the Lord. It was the Lord then. It was the Lord, it's the Lord now. And in verses 5 through 12, we can find God as a deliverer. We can find him as our protection, just as they did. Because if you read this 24th chapter, it was always I. I. It was the Lord. It is the Lord. It was the Lord then, as I said, and it's the Lord now. Because he reminds them when they began to cry to Egypt. God is a deliverer. He sent a man by the name of Moses because they cried. They were in bondage. Verse 5 said, I sent Moses and Aaron and I plagued Egypt. You remember the ten plagues that he put on the Egyptians because Pharaoh's heart was hard and God continued to harden his heart. He would not let his people go. But I tell you, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. He said, according to that which I did among them, in verse 5, I'm still in verse 5, mm -hmm. among them and afterward I brought you out. Mm -hmm. It was the Lord that brought them out. He just, uh, Moses was just an instrument he used. Mm -hmm. Just like he used you and I today to lead somebody out of bondage. Not that we can save them out of, but we can lead them to the one that can deliver them out of their bondage. I, I, I'm reminded of uh, 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 the Apostle Paul in, 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 in Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Because we, we have to understand all of, all of us was in bondage of sin. And, and, and Romans 5 and 8 said, but God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah, we were trapped. We were in bondage. But I, I'm glad that God sent his son to, to, to retrieve us, to deliver us, to, 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 to get us out of that sinful state that we were in, just like he sent Moses to, to deliver his people out of bondage. Verse 6, he said, I brought your fathers out of Egypt. You came unto the sea, and the Egyptians pursued after your fathers with chariots and horsemen 
unto the Red Sea. You remember as they got to the Red Sea, the army were behind them, pursuing them. There was some trouble on the backside. And they began to cry. Hey, ain't it something you, you begin to cry out, God will show up? God will make a way? How many of ever uh, uh, been in a situation that you knew that you knew that you could not get yourself out of? But when you began to cry out to the Lord, didn't he show up and didn't he make a way? Yeah, all of us have experienced some troubles in our life. Whether they were behind us, in front of us, on the side, God was right there with us to deliver us when we cried out. You know when you're in trouble, you, you, you try to find help from somewhere. But I, I tell you, if you turn to God first, God will. I say God will make a way if you turn to God and, and begin to call on him. God, 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 God loves us so much that He's willing to deliver us from whatever it is that we face. Yeah, but it goes on in verse seven, and those Egyptians that were behind Him, God made a way for them. In uh, Exodus, uh, the fourteenth chapter, verses nineteen and twenty, and He said, "And the angel of God." which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. Verse 20, And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them. But it gave light by night to these, so that the the one came not near the other all the night. Uh, ain't it something God got to shield you from trouble? Uh, whatever that trouble is, he can shield you. He can protect you. He can cover you. He can keep you in the midst of everything that's going on. When all hope seems like it's gone, but when, you know how they complain. We might as well. You brought us out here to make grave when we could have stayed in Egypt. Still crying about Egypt. Some of us still crying about where God has brought us from. Yeah. Uh, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. We know how God parted the Red Sea and allowed them to walk through on dry ground. Then when their enemies came in behind them, God closed the sea and destroyed their enemies. God is, God is protecting us from Satan. We know that he's our number one enemy. It says that he's going around like a roaring lion, trying to devour whoever he can. But I, I, I come to tell you this morning, if you got God on your side, ain't nothing the devil can do to you to destroy you. God keeps you. Only God can destroy you. Satan got his part that he has to play. You have your part to play. That's why, that's why there was a decision in this chapter that, that, that you, either, you either do this or either you do that. But yeah, he is a deliverer. God is a protector. And I, and I noticed something as, as, as God is speaking through Joshua. Not once did he mention that sinful way. And I'm reminded, Jeremiah 31 and 34, so say, I will forgive their iniquity, mm -hmm. and I will remember their sin no more. Isaiah 43 and 25, I, even I, am he that blotted out thy transgressions mm -hmm. for mine own sake, and will not remember thy sin. Mm -hmm. It's not that God don't, doesn't know our sinful ways. He just don't throw them up in our face like other people throw our sins up in our face. Uh, he's a good God. He's a faithful God. He's a loving God. Yeah, he, he, he don't throw those sins back up in your face. But we have people that can bring up our past. 
to try to discourage us, yeah. mm -hmm. to try to trip us up, yeah. to try to get us to turn from the path yeah. that God has set for us. Yeah, yeah. and even uh, in, in verse, the latter part of verse 7, and you dwelt in the wilderness a long season. You were there for a long time, 40 years. It didn't have to be there that long, but because of your disobedience, in other words, you were there for a long season, but God did not bring it up to them. Right. We know why they spent that long season in the wilderness because of their doubt, their disbelief, yeah. that, that much complaining. Sound like us today. Right. We can complain. Right. Uh, Sometimes we allow doubt, fear to overcome us. But it's the Lord that kept them in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Every battle that they had to fight, God was right there with them. Mm -hmm. Verse 8, he said, and I brought you into the land of the Amorites, which dwelt on the other side of Jordan. And they fought with you, and I gave them into your hand, that you might possess their land. And I destroyed them from before you. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it wasn't because you were a, 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 a great army mm -hmm. that you conquered the land mm -hmm. and every nation that you came up against that you come it was the Lord it's the Lord that, that allowed you to come and take the land because as I say God is faithful he promised their forefathers this land and, and, and you have some people say well that land wasn't truly theirs but I, I, I would have to remind you this morning, everything that was made was made by God and was made for his purpose. Mm -hmm. So none of us can say we own anything. Mm -hmm. You don't own yourself. Mm -hmm. Everything's God. Yeah. Everything our eyes can see is God's. Mm -hmm. That car you drive, it's God. That house you live in, it's God. This building that we, we, we he, he allow us to come in and to worship and fellowship is God's. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not theirs, ours. It's the Lord's. It's His. But He's just, Joshua just reminding them everything that you went through, God brought you through. Enemies that you knew that were mightier than you, that, that, that were known for fighting, mm -hmm. it was the Lord yes, that allowed you to come. Yes, right. It was the Lord. Mm -hmm. Wasn't because you, you could strategize so well. Mm -hmm. and, then, and those that think they can strategize so well, or where, did, where did the thought come from? Mm -hmm. Come with me. Where did the thought come from? It came from the Lord. Mm -hmm. All the strength and the ability that you have comes from the Lord. So we, we need not forget that, that these things are not ours. Mm -hmm. they, they're the Lord's. He just allows us to use them while we're here. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. He just allows us to use them while we're here. Because see, I understand that we, we're here for a little while. Anyhow, but but I, I know one day we all going to get out of here. And, and I'm waiting for the Lord. Amen. I'm waiting for the Lord. Amen. Even when those that, that, that come to try to curse you. Do you remember when uh, God told Abram, that uh, uh, those who curse at you, I curse them. Amen. Do you remember uh, the king of uh, 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 Balak? Uh -huh. The king of Moab. Mm -hmm. He called Balaam to put a spell on, 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 the, on, the, on the Israelites because he, he was afraid of them. They were coming through. But God would not allow Balaam to curse his folk. People might try to trip you up. People might try to put something on you. But, but I, I, I'm, tell, I'm telling you this morning, if God is on your side, he has you covered. Mm -hmm. Front 
side to side in the back. He's got you covered. There's no covering like God's covering. Mm -hmm. That's right. You can try to shield yourself from, from things, but, but, but sometimes though that, that the enemy gets through, but, but when God covers you, Satan might hit you, but, but God still got you. He still can give you joy in the midst of your suffering and your pain. Ask the Apostle Paul, he can tell you, even though he was stoned and left for dead outside the city, the man still got back up and preached the word of God. James tells us that we can, we can rejoice. Go ahead and rejoice. Regardless of what's going on, go ahead and rejoice. See, a lot of times when, when things happen in our lives, mm -hmm. our joy is gone. Mm -hmm. Because we're focused too much on the problem at hand. Yeah. Instead of focus on the one who can help us through the problem. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. So when, when we find ourselves, even I have to remind myself of right. when things are happening, uh, uh, I, I'll put it like this. One day, you can be singing, uh -huh. let me say it right, singing, <laughs> praising the Lord, uh -huh. Amen. just having a good time. Yes. Even sometime that same day or the next day, something happens. Where's the singing and, and the praising now? <laughs> Do I have any witness this morning that some days you just singing and praising full of joy, but soon as something come along, the singing stop, the praising stop, the joy is gone. Mm -hmm. The reason why our focus has turned from the Lord. Mm -hmm. So all I'm saying, even in the midst of troubles, Go ahead and praise him anyhow. Because cause I, I, I know that problem is not always going to be there. Because if we trust God, God will move our problem. And like I said, even if he don't move the problem, we still can go ahead and praise him. Because he will still give us, a, give us joy in the midst of it. So go ahead and pray. You, you may be troubled today. But, but I, I tell you, go ahead and praise him. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I understand that there are some, some homegoing celebrations going on today, but, but I want to tell you, go ahead and praise the Lord because everything is God. God makes no mistakes. God is just, he's faithful, he's righteous, he's holy. He cannot do any wrong. That's right. Amen. So go ahead and praise. That's right. That's right. Might have bills that you can't even pay right now, but go ahead and praise Right. Might be sick in your body, but go ahead and praise him. Yes, yes. Thank you, God. Family don't want to act right. Go ahead and praise him. <laughs> Can't get to the church like I used to. Go ahead and praise him right where you are. Amen. Church is in your heart. You are the church. We are the church. This is just a building God allows us to congregate together. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and praise him. It's the Lord. It's the Lord that brought Israel. It's the Lord that's bringing you and I today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to be some that try to trip you up. Some that try to hurt you. But, 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 but I, I want to tell you to continue to trust God. Because God is the only one that can deliver you out of all troubles. You can ask David, he'll tell you it was the Lord. That delivered me. You ask Moses, it was the Lord that delivered us. So you can ask if we could go back and ask any of these people in this Bible, and I believe they would tell you it's the Lord that did it. Can you say this morning, it's the Lord that continues to keep me? It's the Lord that continues to bring me. It's the Lord that continues to deliver me out of my troubles, out of my pain from my enemies. You, you, you know, you might have enemies right up on you, but God is a good protector. Because you have people that smile in your face, people that shake your hand, people that say good things about you but really don't mean it. But I'm glad, I'm so glad that God can cover you and keep you from your enemies. Verse 11 says, And ye went over Jordan and came unto Jericho. 
And the men of Jericho fought against you. You know the story. Didn't have to touch nobody. Mm -hmm. All God asked you to do is just to march. March around the fortified city. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring you victory. Yes, mm -hmm. Didn't have to touch anybody. Mm -hmm. Didn't have to pull a sword out. Didn't have to use no arrows. Didn't have to pull your gun out. <laughs> Didn't have to punch nobody. Mm -hmm. Because you allowed the Lord to fight your battle. Mm -hmm. You'd you, you have had some battles in your life, and, but when you put it in the Lord's hand, I was going to say, it's the Lord. When somebody, how can you take that? It's the Lord that's Amen. keeping me. It's the Lord that continues to give me peace in the midst of every situation. Amen. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. Amen. Promise, verse 13, and have given you a land for which you did not labor. You did not labor. And cities which you built not. Mm -hmm. And you dwell in them. Of the vineyards and the olive yards which you planted not, do you eat? <laughs> it's the Lord. He promised. That promise began with Abel. Mm -hmm. Come all the way down to the Israelites at this time. And God is still faithful to his promise. Right. That that was a physical land that God has promised them. But, but I, 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 I want to tell you this morning, he has promised us a spiritual kingdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I, I reminded of John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. Mm -hmm. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Mm -hmm. See, uh, along the way, there's some troubles. Mm -hmm. But he tells us, let not your heart be troubled. Yep. Believe in God. Mm -hmm. right. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. This spiritual place that he's talking about. Uh, uh, he's promised you and I. Mm -hmm. He's promised the whole world if you're just willing to believe. Right. He said, he goes on and says, In my father's house are many mansions. Right. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Uh, and, and, and verses 14 and 15, that was a decision to be made. Where you trust the gods on the other side of the flood. Uh, uh, where your father served. And when you were in Egypt, uh, where you trust the, uh, the gods of the Amorites and the land who you came in and out comfort for you. But Joshua said, as for me in my house, we shall serve the Lord. So today I'm asking, who will you serve? Will you serve gods, these idol gods? Or will you serve the true and living God, the creator of all things, a God who can speak to you, a God who will listen to your prayers and answers? Will you serve him or will you serve some idol God? That's why they call it idol God. They can't see you, they can't hear you, they can't deliver you. You can talk to him, but they can't say anything to you. But we have a God that we can call on and he'll talk to us, he'll come and see about us. Is there anybody in the house that made up their mind that they'll serve the Lord? Will you serve him? God that was so good. Thank you. That loved us so. That's right. That he was willing mm -hmm. to give his best yeah. for the earth's worse. Yes. Right. You and I wasn't fit to live, mm -hmm. wasn't fit to die. Uh -huh. But God being the loving God that he mm -hmm. is. Yes, yes. Son and Son Jesus. Yes. He sent him to die on. And old rugged crops. Mm -hmm. And he hung there for you and for me. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Didn't he do it? Yeah. He died mm -hmm. because of your sins and my sins. Mm -hmm. For the sins of the world. Yep. 
It was his precious and innocent blood that he shed for you and for me. I'm glad that he hung there for you and for me. Yeah, it's the Lord that done it. He died for us all. He died so we could live. And I'm so glad that we can do the same thing he did when he died and they put him in a borrowed tomb. It says early on that third appointed morning that Jesus got up out the grave with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. Didn't he do it? He's alive right now. It says that he's sitting at the right hand of glory. Yes, he's Jesus, God's son, our salvation, our grace, our mercy. Isn't the Lord good? I'm glad that he done that. I'm glad that he's still calling people today. I'm glad that he's my everything. He's my protection. He's my deliverer. He's my provider. He's everything to me. When I'm down and out, he knows just how to lift me up. I know him for myself. You have to know him for yourself. Your own personal relationship. I can hear what he done for mother and father. I can hear and read what he done for you. But he'll do the same thing for you if you just trust him. Oh, Calvin Boy, Deacon Boy, I mean, uh, Pastor Boy, now look at me. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Hell no more. He always say Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord. Lead not to thine own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge the Lord, and he shall direct your path. It's your decision. He won't force himself on you. It's your decision. Oh, you will not have messed up. He's still calling. Come on, come on. Come on. Why you got time? Because one day, he's coming back. He's coming back. Make the decision today to put away those idols. Recognize it's the Lord that brought you from where you were to where you are today. I know in between there were some troubles. I know there was some hard times. I know there was some sickness. I know there was some death along the way. But he brought you and he's keeping you right where you are. Is there anybody that need him? I'll be the first to raise my hand. I need it. Every step of the way, I need it. Because see, I, I, I'm not perfect. Don't claim to be perfect. But I know he's perfect. Amen. So I'll trust him. I won't trust myself, but I'll trust him. I, I won't put my trust in nobody else. Anyone else, I'll put all my trust in him. God bless you. We extend this invitation to Christian discipleship. He promised Israel. That promised land. But he's promised you a spiritual home. Not made by hands, but it's eternal in the heavens. But in order to get there, you have to know Jesus Christ. You have to have a personal relationship with him. Mm -hmm. You can receive everything you, you desire to try to receive and still come up short sometimes. But I, I, with God, you won't come up short. There's nothing wrong with having dreams or, 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 with, or, or, or planning where you want to be in the next five or ten years. But but the thing about it, you need to uh, a plan for eternity. Where you want to spend your eternity. But we know not the day nor the hour that the Son of Man shall return. We don't know the day that, that, that the last day we have on the face of this earth. As I said earlier, somebody closed their eyes on last night and didn't open them this morning. 
So the decision is yours. And I, would, I, would, I would tell you this morning to hook up with Jesus. He won't lead you wrong. He'll lead you the right way. He say, I, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In order to get to the Father, in order to get to that kingdom, you have to go through Jesus. So wherever you are this morning, physically, most of all, spiritually, that's what counts. Spiritually. Where will I spend eternity? It's your, it's your decision, your choice. All you have to do is call on Say, those who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So today is the day of salvation.
that somebody that is in darkness, that they may see Jesus in us, that they too will glorify you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for all you do for us each and every day. Lord, I, I don't know the troubles that people go through in this world, but Lord, you know all things. We just put all things in your hand. Realize that, God, you are true and living God. So help us to put all our trust in you. Not in things, not in people, but in you, God. And Lord, we'll wait until you call us home. So thank you, Father. Thank you, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say, Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you.